This is the iPhone 5, released in September 2012 as a push for Apple to finally increase the size of their iPhone screen. They also changed the design to a 4 inch device and this device will live on to be the iPhone 5S and the more refined modern iPhone SE here in 2017. But you might have the question, Nick, should I buy an iPhone 5 here in 2017 that has come way down in the price point? And I think I got the answer for you right here on this video so stay tuned to that let's go So let's begin with the key specs here of the iPhone 5. Apple A6 chipset, dual core 1.3 gigahertz, an eight megapixel 1080p video recording camera, one gigabyte of RAM, a 1440 milliamp hour battery, and iOS 6 out of the box, upgradable to iOS 10.2. So taking a closer look here, you can see that we are rocking the latest version of iOS, iOS 10.2, 14C, 92 for the 5S, which brings quicker animations, which brings widgets to the side panel, as well as control center down below and snappier animations. As you can see, the redesigned clock app and a few other features. Well, there's actually quite a few. I did an iOS 10 review on the iPhone 5. You could check that out in the description. But in terms of the iPhone 5, you will will get that classic nice aluminum body that you have on the 5S as well as the SE. This was the first iPhone to do it here and it was a radical departure from the all glass design of the iPhone 4S, the first that had a 4 inch screen. But the chipping on this device was a problem with the iPhone 5 which was fixed in the future models. But design is pretty great here. Now you are not going to get a fingerprint scanner here, you're going to get that old iOS home button but at least in the software it kind of feels like a fingerprint scanner because of this press home to open to go into the software which is included on iOS 10. Now in terms of the screen on the iPhone 5, we're talking about a retina display 326 pixels per inch with great viewing angles as well as great color accuracy. The iPhone 5 display is exactly the same as the SE, gets plenty bright and it's a great display. But over here in terms of pocketability and portability, the iPhone 5 has always been extremely small, extremely easy to handle and it's just a very great portable phone if you like going out all the time and you don't want something big. Very easy to reply to a quick message and put it in your pocket and get on your way now battery life on the iphone 5 has been quite disappointing here on ios 10.2 but overall you can definitely get through a day if you're a light user if you're a heavy user keep a battery pack around you or a charger because you're going to need to charge this throughout the day and you at least you have low power mode here for the iphone 5 which is a nice inclusion seeing that this is an older device getting those newer features like the newer iphones now when we talk about performance on the iphone 5 it seems kind of deceiving when you first swiping through it everything seems smooth but once you start hopping into third-party apps here's where you're gonna see the hit in performance and how this phone is aging third-party apps are a little bit slow to open up and nothing like what you're gonna find in the newer iPhone so have a little patience with third-party apps if you're gonna be buying or using an iPhone 5 standard apps work just fine here on the iPhone 5 not the fastest device but definitely still a functional device meaning you can use it you can get some things done, but it's definitely not a fast device anymore, but it will get the job done for basic tasking. Now that camera on the rear is an 8 megapixel camera, and that's an eyesight camera, as well as that front 1.2 megapixel camera, and this does shoot in at 720p or 1080p on the video recording. And this camera was really good for its time, and even in um, 2017, it's still a pretty decent camera. The software on the iPhone 5 as you can see if we go in the camera here is exactly what you're gonna find on the iPhone 7 all you're gonna see different here is that you don't have the slow-mo and you don't have the live photos here but you got pano square photo and you can still get some decent photography done here with the iPhone 5 it's gonna be decent though it's not gonna be professional level so don't expect a blazing fast amazing camera here hello uh, but the front-facing camera is also not that great but they're still functional like I say this phone is still functional and you still get the flash, you get the HDR modes, you get the timer, and you get some filter effects. And it's a really easy and fun camera to shoot with because it's very small. But let's check out some samples here.
So here is a sample of the rear recording on the iPhone 5. This is 1080p full HD with the autofocus lock on. This is what you're going to expect from the audio as well as the video quality of the iPhone 5 here in 2017. This is a sample of the front facing camera on the iPhone 5. This shoots in at 720p HD and this is audio firing directly from the speaker itself. So the question is, should you buy an iPhone 5 in the year of 2017? And I hope this video went ahead and helped you to decide just that. Personally, I just cannot recommend the iPhone 5 anymore. It's just, it's just not that fast. It does have the latest version of iOS, but you know, the standard apps work, but once you start getting into third party apps, this phone becomes a frustration and the camera is pretty nice and it comes in at under 100 bucks on most used markets but i really just cannot recommend this one anymore i did recommend in my previous videos the iphone 5s because it's still pretty quick it still has a pretty nice camera and a fingerprint scanner so you don't feel super outdated with the 5s although this one's getting becoming a little outdated as well but i think the best option is the iphone se and i did a video on both iPhone 5s and iPhone SE if you should buy either one of those so you can go ahead and check those down below in the description but as far as the iPhone 5 definitely not a recommendation for me but what are your guys thoughts do you think the iPhone 5 is still worth it here in 2017 I think the only thing you're gonna really get out of this is when you first get it out of the box you're gonna feel like it's a nice design it feels quality but other than that it's gonna become a frustration real quick if you do anything more than texting calling and Anyways, this was Nick here helping to master your technology. Have a great day wherever you are. Be sure to be well. I will catch you all in the next one. And